Hi, and welcome to a video about a new addition to the VexBarn collection. This is the Convey HC2 EX coprocessor, and although it's much newer than most of the systems in our collection, it still fits in, mainly because of the company that made it, Convey. Convey was founded by some of the same people who started Convex, and as you know, we have a few Convex supercomputers in our collection. So when we learned that a scrapper in Illinois was offering a Convey system, we snapped it up and had it shipped to the Netherlands. So is this box, which looks like a rather bland 2U server, a supercomputer? Not quite. It's not even a computer, but a coprocessor for a computer. And it's incomplete. As you can see, the power supplies are missing and the only connections are this PCIe connector to connect to a host system, also missing, and serial and network ports for diagnostic purposes. As you can see on the label, it's a Model HC or Hybrid Core 2EX, and it was built in September 2012. Since there's not that much to see on the outside, let's open her up. So the first thing that stands out is this huge board in the top half of the machine. By contrast, the bottom half of the machine is nearly empty apart from this small board with the interface connections on it. We'll get to the reason for this in a bit. Back to the main board. Underneath each of these black heat sinks is an FPGA. And in addition, there's also an FPGA on each of the 16 memory modules. And there are some FPGAs without a heat sink. That's a whole lot of configurable logic. So to figure out why all this configurable logic, let's take a look at the architecture of this machine. As I said, this is a coprocessor system used for high performance computing. Most coprocessors for HPC, like NVIDIA's Tesla, use graphics processors to accelerate computations, but this coprocessor uses FPGAs. To better understand the architecture, we'll look at the HC1 and HC1EX first. The HC1 used a board similar to this one in a 2U chassis similar to this one, but in the HC1, the bottom half of the chassis contained a two socket Intel Xeon motherboard. Only one of those sockets had a Xeon processor in it, the other socket connected to the coprocessor through a mezzanine card. The coprocessor implemented the frontside bus architecture of the Xeon processor to maintain cache coherency between the Xeon processor and the custom coprocessor. For the HC2 and the HC2 EX, Convey wanted to use newer, faster Xeon processors, but these used the QPI bus instead of frontside bus. Instead of implementing QPI, Convey decided to use PCIe as the interconnect between the newer Xeon processors and the coprocessor. In the HC2EX, the Xeon processors are in a separate standard Intel server chassis. Unfortunately, we don't have the matching server. The coprocessor runs alongside the Xeon CPUs and has its own instruction set. A generic instruction set is provided with basic processor functionality. And these instructions are implemented in the AEH, the Application Engine Hub, which consists of these two FPGAs. Some of the opcodes in the instruction set, however, are reserved for application-specific instructions. And those instructions are executed by the four application engines, AEs. In the HC1 and HC2, these are big Xilinx fi Vertex 5 FPGAs. But in the HC1 EX and HC2 EX, these are even larger Vertex 6 FPGAs, the V6LX760 to be precise, which back in 2012 was the biggest FPGA money could buy. Serious money. These FPGAs retailed for around $15,000 each, but with Xilinx being an investor in Convey, I'm sure Convey got a much better price. Rather than provide the different instructions needed to solve a variety of problems all at once, these FPGAs get loaded with what Convey calls a personality, an instruction set that is tailored towards a particular application. That way, all the computing resources are optimized for the problem at hand. 
Convey itself provided personalities for 32 and 64 bit vector calculations, financial calculations, DNA sequencing, and various other applications. One could also develop their own custom personality using the personality development kit Convey provided. All these FPGAs which implement the processor are connected to eight memory controllers, which provides a crossbar to a 31-way interleaved 16-channel DDR2 memory subsystem. The 16 4 GB DDR2 DIMMs are non-standard. Standard DIMMs could be used, but this system is outfitted with scatter -gather, gather DIMMs. An FPGA on each of the DIMMs provides scatter gather functionality, which basically means that the DIMMs are optimized for addressing individual 64-bit words rather than entire cache lines at a time. This makes the memory subsystem much faster for problems that address memory in a random or strided fashion. The bandwidth of a regular memory subsystem with caches collapses rapidly if not every word in a cache line is used, as this graphic from a Convey presentation shows. Finally, there are some more FPGAs scattered over the two boards to provide management capabilities, glue logic, and of course the PCIe interface to the host system. In all, there are close to 40 FPGAs in this box. There's also a PowerPC microprocessor on the big board. The PowerPC processor provides a management interface to the system and is responsible for loading the configuration bit streams into the various FPGAs, monitoring the power supplies and fans and running various diagnostics on the system. The missing power supplies are a bit of a challenge, but by measuring the size of the power supply slots and counting the number of contacts on the connectors um, and determining which contacts are connected to ground and plus 12 volt buses, I believe I was able to identify a super micro power supplies that should work in this system. I found two of those on eBay and they're on their way as we speak. When they arrive, we'll see whether I correctly identified the power supplies to use. We got a couple of power supplies that I believe will fit this system so let's plug those in. Yep and the latch engages and it's secured to the system now. So couldn't be happier. That fits, and that's a pretty good indication that these are in the, the right power supplies. The other thing I've done is I've hooked up a terminal to the serial port. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to plug in the power cables. Okay, so as soon as I plug the power cables in, there's output on the serial port. Hit any key to stop auto boot. Must have hit a key, so I'm going to boot. Just a wild guess. Oh, and while we're at it, let's have a look at what's happening on the board. The fans have come on, they're pretty loud. Uh, there's some red LEDs lit and there's a green LED and some yellow ones and in the front of the unit there's a blinking green and blue LEDs. So let's hit enter after our boot command. And yes it's booting a version of Linux. It takes a while to boot, it's probably initializing all sorts of things, something about flash memory, this is probably all still management processor stuff. So 
starting syslog d. Okay, FPGA daemon. It looks like it's now loading. Oh, we have more. Wow. The fans just became a whole lot louder. Oh, and they wind down again. So, for a minute there, the fans became really loud, and now they're back to the already loud level they had before. Now, the red LEDs have turned off, and I see some green LEDs now. Looks like there's two green LEDs in each of the four quadrants, and then there's some additional green LEDs around the management processor section, and still a few of the yellow LEDs. Um, it doesn't look like it's doing anything further, so... Oh, if I hit enter, there's a login prompt. So it's probably done initializing the system. And the, the login prompt says Celero MP. And I'm wondering if that's something significant. So, there we have it. Um, oh, and the... Uh, Blue LED in the front is no longer, no longer blinking, and there's two green LEDs lit in the front of the system now. So, until we've connected it to a suitable host system, I think this is all that we can do.